If you couldn't tell already, this video was made in the style of a guy whose videos I like, the Armored Skeptic. So without further ado, what you are about to watch is awful. Should cause some internal problems for you. There should be physical symptoms as you watch this. So let me just say right off the bat, I'm sorry. While the vast, vast majority of the protests going on in Washington, D.C. today during Donald Trump's inauguration were peaceful, there were isolated instances of violence. We don't yet know if they were actually uh, progressives or liberals or if they were just provocateurs sent there by the right wing. But we're going to show you if we could... Join me, why won't you, as I descend down the rabbit hole of regression. I love the idea that John just threw out, that these protesters were somehow a mystery to us as to where they stood on the political spectrum. They could be progressives, or they could be plants from right-wingers. <laughs> Which is more likely, John? But well done. Muddy the waters, throw out a ridiculous notion, and then just move on to the next topic. Great. No one will ever know. I find it fascinating, the defensive measures that these people do in reaction to some of the violent protests at the inauguration. Continue. Just bring up the, uh, the B-roll pictures here. You're going to see shots, some of what looks like it might be violent. Oh, this is good, too. Mm -hmm. You're seeing there uh, various things being thrown by police and things like that to try to clear out the group. You're seeing a huge amount of police and riot gear there. Yeah. This is just one spot, but there were instances like this in, in other parts of D.C. Look, look, I, I, I can't stand this stuff. Uh, so Don't throw the con. Whatever, the whole thing, yeah. So, look, I... They could accuse me of of being comfortable and saying, and well, you're not out there protesting and stuff like that. And no, 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 protests I'm in favor of. Okay, I, in fact, I got arrested doing a, pro, a protest where we did civil disobedience. Right? Let's play the bonanza game. I'm not going to go through this whole video, but that's a massive virtue signal. Okay, here, here's what I'm saying. I I hate all this. Oh, I hate violence. Oh God, I hate it. I mean, if it's violence from my own people, like the Armenian genocide, then I'll just bury it and never talk about it. I mean, <laughs> that's how much I hate it, right? But I'm in favor of protests, which reminds me, um, I protested and I got arrested. Yeah, your fat ass waddled around Washington, D.C. in what was basically a publicity stunt, which accomplished nothing. Aside from the fact that you've got a story to tell about how you got arrested. <laughs> Trying to pay people to cause trouble during the inauguration. This is something that right-wingers do, so I would not be shocked if there were provocateurs out there. We don't know who these individuals are, but we do know one thing, and that is that the mission of true progressives, true liberals, is a peaceful one. Anna, what do you mean by that? First of all, why the blonde hair? Didn't you do multiple videos about hair appropriation? I'm pretty sure I did a video on that. How does she justify this? I mean, every Halloween rolls around if we so much as put a feather anywhere near our costume we're deemed to be worse than Christopher Columbus. And now she's just rocking blonde hair? No. No, cut that off. Call the surgeon that carved off your hook nose beak and have him shave your head. A la G.I. Jane, a la Natalie Portman from Vendetta, a la me. And that's not a Muslim thing. That's just, it's a French thing. Okay, what she's trying to do is saying, if you take part in violence, you're not part of us. Anna floats on an ethereal cloud above all violence. No true Scotsman ever swung a broadsword, Mr. Mel Gibson. You are no longer a Scotsman. And let me be the first liberal here to say, no, fuck that. Now look, violent protest I disagree with, but to be against violence is insane. This is the difference between regressives and everybody else, is that they are weak. This is a weak stance. To shy away from violence in this manner, it shows your total unwillingness to grapple with actual problems. Because guess what? There are violent people out there, and we need violence. We need a military. We need the cops. We need batons and tasers. There is a time and a place to kick ass. And if your policy, if your standing policy is just, I will never be violent, then you're no better than a tree-hugging hippie. Now go smoke pot, have a little free love, contract AIDS, and leave the planet. Now, I will not make an excuse for anyone who uses violence during any of these protests, but I will say- Oh, but you will say but, more importantly. You will say but. I will not make an excuse for them but, and now guess where we're going? We're <laughs> Strap on. Strap on your strap on. Guess where we're going? Watch. But I will say this. 
I find it interesting what the media's response is to people breaking windows and how quickly they denounce that kind of violence. Oh, are you telling me there should be a pause in their denouncement of this violence? Oh, well, you know, that Starbucks was overcharging people for their coffee, and the lines were kind of long, and the 18-year-old they had behind the counter was kind of taking his sweet time. When simultaneously, we will be bombarded with police shooting videos where, no. where we will see someone like Walter Scott running away from a police officer as he gets shot several times in the back. I believe, Anna, if you check the history, that story was covered in depth, and that video has been played millions of times. That is not a buried story. Now, for everybody out there, and she does it again later in this video, this is a pivot to fuck whites, to fuck cops, and to save blacks. This is, hey, yeah, I know you want to denounce the rioting at the inauguration day, but why aren't you talking about Walter Scott right now? That's another problem, isn't it? Two problems kind of makes a who cares. Does anybody remember what we were talking about? Have I confused you? <laughs> yeah, and the reason nobody's talking about Walter Scott while covering a riot on Inauguration Day is because that happened months ago and would be totally irrelevant. That would be a non sequitur, blondie. And that type of violence doesn't get denounced as quickly. Oh, we don't know all the evidence yet. We don't know all the- What do you mean it doesn't get denounced as quickly? Of course it did and does. Why do you think they arrested the man for murder? <laughs> Why do you think that happened? And here's the subtle difference. When a police officer is accused of a crime, we must factor in all the details because we don't know what happened precisely because the police officer has to deal with a lot of shit. And when the facts come out, as they did, everybody was denounced properly. But only Anna wants to bring this back and shoehorn it into a conversation that has nothing to do with anything. Oh, we don't know all the evidence yet. We don't know all the evidence yet. Walter just... Scott once smoked marijuana. Right, so, <laughs> so look, same. violence in any circumstance is unacceptable. But think about the violence that we are now desensitized to versus the type of, you know, vandalism we're very, very sensitive to. So once again, the amateur nature of these people rears its head. These are people that have wandered off the street and just, you know, right out of academia. Anna goes to a shit college and is super idealistic. She just wanders onto a set. She begs this fucking stumpy dude for a job. And they're just like, yeah, Anna, just talk. Just say stuff. This is the same journalistic integrity as The View. You know The View with Whoopi Goldberg and used to be Rosie O'Donnell and all them? Do you know what credentials they bring to the table? Absolutely none. And do you know why that show works? Sadly, it appeals to the lowest common denominator. People want to feel like they're the smartest person in the room. Nobody wants to hear a bunch of intellectuals talk or people that are just too informed. They're like, I I'd rather hear just a dumbass average analysis of everything. It's stunning to me that this is the dynamic at play here consistently. Uninformed, average, biased, hateful, moronic people spouting off whatever. Unlike all the partisans, etc., and, and I include the establishment as partisans, uh, and look, the, the mainstream media, their number one problem is they have, they claim they don't have a perspective or an opinion. That's preposterous. Their perspective is that of an establishment, okay? Protect the status quo. Uh, and so that's their enormous bias, right? 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 So if anything upsets the status quo, they're outraged by, oh my God, you broke a Starbucks window, I go to that Starbucks. This is yet another stupid utterance from Frankenstein's younger, fatter, sweatier, browner, special needs little brother. Um, what do you mean the media is the establishment? The status quo. The status quo and the establishment are buzzwords that they will fling out and try to apply to anything. So wait, you think that the news covering the mini riots going on during the inauguration is them with an agenda? Okay, wait, so wait, the establishment is not having our buildings ransacked and destroyed. That's the status quo. And what's your status quo, gank? If somebody went down to your studio and firebombed it, would your outrage and would your talking about that event be you protecting the establishment and the status quo? Yeah, the status quo is called civilization. You fucking monkey. Now, I hate that they broke the Starbucks window. I'm going to get back to that in a second, right? 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 But if you shot Walter Scott in the back, well, I'm not Walter Scott. I wasn't going to run from a cop. I don't have, uh, you know, outstanding traffic tickets or anything. Simply amazing. <laughs> I'm against violence. Uh, okay, here's what it is. Um, 
Somebody threw a brick in a window. Um, now I'm up here. I'm wearing a t-shirt with a jacket. Well, let me riff off of that. Let me. Okay, what do I want to say about? Hmm. Well, how about the question that everyone's on everybody's mind? Am I in favor of burning down stores and busting windows? Uh, no, I'm not. I'm. I'm against it. <laughs> oh, it's brilliant, Genk. It's br It's like watching Haley's Comet, but every day. And then we get a pivot. On over to Walter Scott? What in the fuck? Talking about Walter... Talking about Walter Scott. Talking about... Da, 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 living it up on the Very Give Talk Show. Talking about... Doo, doo, doo. Talking about black people for no reason. Living it up. Okay, what in the two pound, three ounce baby Jesus Christ are you talking about when you mention Walter Scott in connection to fanatical lefties busting up a McDonald's? What are you doing? Oh, I know what you're doing. You want to talk about a situation where a cop did something wrong. A white cop did something wrong to a black guy. What itch does this scratch on your bloated ass, disgusting body? Well, it covers fuck whites, <laughs> for sure. It covers save the blacks. It covers fuck the cops, and it's also a pivot to another problem. So, literally just talking past all of us. The very hard to wrestle with question of whether or not it's good for people to break down McDonald's's, McDonald's is now left in the dust. It's not on the table anymore. We're going to go talk about another problem, which is the cop who shot Walter Scott in the back. Happened months ago, it has nothing to do with anything, but bring it up, because we're comfortable in that area. That milieu. I'm not, I don't, I'm not a poor guy living in South Carolina. I'm not the a 12-year-old named Tamir Rice. <laughs> okay, so what's great is they're taking on the part. They're playing the part of somebody, like a right-winger, who doesn't have empathy. Oh, not like these empathetic people of color. Yet yeah, they care about it so much that on the day after Inauguration Day, they will bring it back out of the void to rub people's faces in it. And Anna... The hook-nosed Anna brings up Tamir Rice. He was 12. Oh my, not even 13. He was a tween. Tamir Rice. Oh, poor Tamir. I guess the 24 white people who got shot with toy guns that year will not be mentioned, but yeah, forget that. <laughs> Mention one of the five blacks that got shot with toy guns. Sort of a phenomenon that kind of explains itself. You carry around guns, you flash them at cops. It's not going to go well for you, hombre. So yeah, Tamir Rice gets brought up and uh, it's just uh, pathetic. And what it is, is it's number 10. It's if someone presents a problem to you, mention another problem. Because two wrongs make a who cares. How are we supposed to keep track? We were talking about one thing, but then, whoa, whoa, we're over here. Tamir Rice, what happened? Was the, Are we going to discuss the details of the case? No, why? It's just random. Oh, she's not done. Go, continue, Anna. I'm not oh, a 12-year-old named Tamir Rice who's playing with a toy gun at a park. You know, that's not me, so who gives a fuck? So, you know, absolutely crazy playing with the toy gun. He was brandishing a weapon and could have killed somebody. In other words, it could have been a real gun. It looked exactly like a real gun. And as far as who gives a fuck? Oh, Anna, you do. You know why? Because you're better than everybody. What you're doing is race baiting. What you're doing is a pointless exercise of virtue signaling. This is the Anna Kasparian world tour. Hey, mom, look, I'm on the TV again. Look, everybody, I'm making something with my life. I'm a journalist, right? I'm a journalist. Yeah. Nope, you're not. Nope, you're not, actually. And um, Tamir Rice has nothing to do with anything, so shut your beak. And, and the cops protect me. Yeah. The cops protect me, so I, that's law and order. That's status quo. I kind of like status quo. Yeah. So I'm going to come at it with a certain lens. Now, uh, again, he tries to take a pop shot at the status quo. And what he's defining as the status quo is cops protect the citizens. And he's trying to disparage this notion. Oh, well, yeah, gang, let's protect the status quo then. But we're the Young Turks, and we're, we're supposed to uh, upend the establishment. Okay, well, you're a caricature of what people should not be like. That is the service you provide to YouTube. Thank you. And to the people who are doing the violence. Look, if you're a progressive, the whole point of being progressive is nonviolence. <laughs> amazing. Simply amazing. Nonviolence. Okay, so that says a lot, doesn't it? I told you that pacifism was at the core of these people. And what is pacifism in a world filled with competitive primates, tribalistic, violent primates? What is a pacifist? Well, that's somebody who's not living in reality. 
You can have all the aspirations you want, be as idealistic as you want. If you are not willing, or if you don't understand how and when violence is necessary, then you're a clueless douche who offers nothing to the conversation. So he adamantly says it. Violence is terrible. So that's why it's fuck America constantly. Because America's got to deal with violent groups of people all around the world. That's why they minimize terrorism. Oh, you know, it's terrorism something, but also people die from heart attacks and uh, car crashes and, you know, furniture breaking. And that's not as egregious. That's not as confrontational. We don't have to admit that there are violent people at the gates that we got to go and smack down with violence. And you know who's violent in our communities? The criminal element, most of which are black per capita. Not even close. No, 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 not, not that. The cops who have to deal with those people, they're the violent ones. Well, surely they must be violent to deal with the violent subset of these communities. Surely you understand that. No, no, I think that if we can get rid of um, the cops and just like criticize them to death and take away their power to do anything and, you know, just view them as the problem, then we can just sort of wipe our hands of it. This is like saying if you get rid of band-aids, then people getting cut will stop. That's exactly what they're trying to say. And that is the toddler level mentality that is at work here. So if you see anybody around you doing violence, do a circle, get around them, and point them out to the authorities because they're not with you. And, and that way you can root out the provocateurs, mm -hmm. okay? <laughs> yeah, the minute somebody does violence, they are no true Scotsman out of the movement. I wonder if they would apply this to the Black Lives Matter movement. Oh, you know they did. You know they did. Anybody that kills a cop, anybody that tortures and kidnaps somebody, even though they openly say that they're in favor of Black Lives Matter, clearly part of the movement. No, they're not officially a part of the movement anymore. Bye-bye. I saw this done to the president of Black Lives Matter Toronto. She was no true Scotsman out of being part of Black Lives Matter. <laughs> it, so, and now let me go piss off a whole bunch of people, but that's okay because they're all trolls, right? That's right, that's right, that's right. Both on the, whatever, if they think that they're on the left or on extreme left or, or certainly plenty of the right, right? The right, 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 right. So this is moronic. I mean, he brings up right-wing protesters for, I mean, again, pivoting and muddying the water, saying, hey, yeah, we are reacting to a story about left-wing people rioting, but let's just talk about provocateurs. Let's call them that. Well, that's fancy. A provocateur is a guy with a clever, a witty retort from the back of a fucking public gathering. A provocateur is somebody who goes to Speaker's Corner in London and gets up and says, Islam is the new Nazism. React. A guy throwing a brick through a window is a rioter and a thug and a criminal. Which is like they're, the anarchists, like the original trolls. They're like, ah, who cares about order? Let's mess up the order. <laughs> ah, right? Ah, right? Ah, right? And I'm just going to mess with people, but I'm not going to solve anything. What do I care about solving anything? I don't want to be productive. In fact, let's be counterproductive. Bah! Bah! And the, and the all right. That's a direct quote. Yeah. Bah! <laughs> and all right. Let's be counterproductive. Bah! <laughs> alt right's the same thing. And now the alt right get a mention. So he's going after just literal internet trolls. It's, it's just stunning to see the dynamics of what happens here. I mean, let me ask you a question. If a bunch of right wingers went out and started a riot and they covered that story, do you think that they would bring up, I don't know, uh, Greenpeace terrorism, left wing protests and rioters, Black Lives Matter riots? Do you think that would be brought up? No, they'd be 100% on that. Let's just mess things up. Let's just break things. Break them. Who cares? We don't have to be productive. The alt-right and the, and the anarchists, pff, they must love each other. I'm surprised they haven't gotten together and done orgies yet. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Right? Yeah. Right? Yeah. So, because they're so stupidly unproductive. You know what we want in order to get real change? You want moms. You want small business owners. You want real Americans, and, and by real Americans, I mean everybody. I don't mean what Republicans think, like, oh, a white farmer from Iowa is a real American, but a gay person from San Francisco is an alien, right? 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 Okay, so there's another shot at white people. It's fuck the conservatives, it's fuck whites, and it's a virtue signal that Jenk is in favor of gay people. Amazing. It's just stunning. <laughs> it's the same pattern over and over again. I have decoded these people. I could program an app to tell you what these people will say about any event. It's just mix and match. No, I mean all walks of life at those protests so you can win and get real change instead of getting your rocks off pretending to be, you know, yeah. alt left or alt right or whatever the hell you think you are. Yeah, and the train wreck and the cringe compilation that is the Young Turks continues to undulate its way into the future like Jabba the Hutt 
waking up in the middle of the night, trying to get to the bathroom to take a piss. And what I, and the regressive agenda which I have outlined, represents, is a thermal detonator. By the way, I have put a new shirt together with this thermal detonator, all 12 points listed. Look at it. Know that it is part of your destiny, and press the necessary buttons to make it yours. Please wear it with pride. Please explain it to people when they ask you. It is a conversation starter. It is a majestic way for you to peacock, and for you to also be right. And with that, I leave you temporarily. I will return, and we will do this again. Good night. <laughs> oh, wow. Hi. It's crazy. Yeah. He likes me right now, because I'm feeding him. <laughs> Want some, too? There you go. I like it's this one. huge. He's more my size. Keep. Make sure you keep eating the big one. <laughs> oh. Oh, wow. Wow, wow, wow. All right. <laughs> Time to go. He's following. He's following. He's following. Don't bring him oh, over. Oh, mama. Car.